Hey Rackstars, I'm Diego and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to build your own developer gateway using a Raspberry Pi and a Rack LP1 concentrator. In this tutorial we will use the Rack 5146 gateway concentrator module and Raspberry Pi 4. Let's begin. First, we need to prepare the hardware. If you're already familiar with the Raspberry Pi and have set up the basic environment, you can skip the following steps and head directly to installing the Rack Pi OS firmware. As previously mentioned, for the hardware we'll use Raspberry Pi 4 Module B, Rack 5146 Wizlink LP1 Concentrator, SD card with at least 16GB memory, card reader, GPS antenna, only if the concentrator supports GPS, LoRa antenna, and Pi Hat. Mount the Rack 5146 Wizlink LP1 Concentrator to the Rack 2287 Rack 5146 Pi Hat by aligning and inserting the Rack 5146 Concentrator into the MPCLE slot of the Rack 2287 Rack 5146 Pi Hat at a 45 degree angle. Make sure the card fits snugly into the connector. Gently press down and fasten it with two screws. The screw holes on the concentrator should match the ones on the Pi Hat. Use round head bolts with a 2mm outer diameter. Then mount the Rack 2287 Rack 5146 Pi Hat with the attached concentrator on the top of the Raspberry Pi 4. Secure the Pi Hat with four rounded bolts that are 2.5mm in outside diameter. Finally, attach the LoRa antenna and GPS antenna to the concentrator. Now we need to flash the SD card with Rack Pi OS. To ensure a seamless experience, Check out our resources in the description box below. Now insert the already flashed SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Here you can plug in an internet cable into the Raspberry Pi. Your router will be assigned a DHCP address to it, so you'll need to be able to access it. But in this example, we'll configure the Wi-Fi internet connection so we won't need to use the internet cable. The Rack Pi OS comes with an access point where you can connect and configure everything else, like your internet connection, LoRa, etc. After the SD card is inserted, power on the Raspberry Pi using the adapter. When the Raspberry Pi fully boots, you will see an AP named Rack underscore XXXX, where XXXX are the last four characters of the MAC address of the Raspberry Pi. Connect to it. The password to connect to the AP is Rack Wireless. After you connect to the AP, you can use any SSH tool to connect to the Raspberry Pi. In this case, we'll be using PuTTY. You can access the Raspberry Pi on IP 192.168.230.1. The credentials for the Raspberry Pi are Username, Rack Password, Change Me For security reasons, on the first login, you'll be prompted to change the password. Type the correct one, then type the new one and confirm it. The session will disconnect you. Connect again to the Raspberry Pi using your new password. When logged in, type rackpios-cli. Ignore the error and click OK. From here, you can configure all networks and services on the Raspberry Pi. Next, head to Manage Networks, then configure Wi-Fi. Select WLAN 0, then select STA mode. You can either scan the available networks or enter the SSID manually. We'll do it manually for this example. Once you've typed the SSID in your network, click OK. Then type the password. After that, you can enable the configuration. Type the password of the Rack user to confirm the changes. The connection will be lost. If the SSID and password are set correctly, your router will assign a DHCP address to your Raspberry Pi. You need to scan your network or check the DHCP list in the web UI of the router's homepage. Access the Raspberry Pi CLI using the assigned DHCP address. Now, let's run a packet forwarder and connect the gateway to the Things network. Again, type rackpios-cli and head to the Deploy Services. Scroll down and click on the U key to find the DUP packet forwarder. 
Then select Configure Environment Variables. Some of the settings are set as default. In this example, we'll connect the gateway to the EU cluster of TTN in EU868 band. For this, you need to set the following. TTN underscore region. For this case, we'll leave it as default. Interface, the interface of the concentrator, which is SPI. Model, Rack 5146. Band, for this case, we'll leave it as a default, but you can change it to whichever band you're using. Once everything is set, click on Save and Back. Then select Start the Service. Click Yes to deploy the service. The gateway will start pulling the packet forwarder image. Once this is done, you will receive a note showing the EUI of the gateway. The EUI is needed when registering in TTN, so make sure to save yours somewhere safe. Finally, click OK and then select Finish. Now the packet forwarder service is running. You are now ready to register your new gateway to whichever platform suits you best, like TTN for example. Log in to the TTN console. Select register a gateway. Paste your EUI in the gateway EUI field and click confirm. Choose the frequency plan of the gateway, in this case it's EU868. Then click register gateway. Once registered, the gateway should be connected. And that's it. We hope this quick tutorial helped you out. If you want more of this, drop us a comment down below and stay tuned.